great. Today I bring you a little hard candy haul. As I was in Walmart the other day, I just stumbled across quite a few products that I believe are pretty new to Hard Candy's line. So I wanted to show you those. Um, some of these I've been using a little bit so far. So I can give you a little information here and there, but this is definitely stuff I'm going to want to continue to try and review for you eventually. And it's a lot of eye stuff, but I do have kind of a face body product that I'll start out with. I found this um, Sheer Glow all the way in In the Buff. And if you're familiar with the line, you know they have something called Glow All the Way, um, just the regular. Um, and I have this in Glamazon Bronze. The Sheer Glow All the Way is kind of like a soft peachy gold. And then this regular kind, more opaque in color, more intense and kind of metallic looking. It says you can apply it to face and body for a sheer luminous finish. Um, so far, I've worn a little bit of this mixed in with a moisturizer, mixed with a couple of different foundations just to add a little something. It is a very, very subtle effect. If you do decide to add this to um, different face products you might be using as sort of a mixer type thing. But I think I really liked it best when I just put a little bit of this on my hand and then dabbed it on with my e.l.f. small stipple brush as kind of a, a very soft highlight um, on my cheeks. I thought it gave a very subtle look. Mixed in with some body lotion, I think it would be beautiful, but definitely something I want to experiment with and continue to try a few more ways. Another super exciting thing that I found is this thing called Brows Now. Now, and it's a brow fiber gel plus highlighter and it really struck me as something similar to Benefit's um, Gimme Brow which is a product I actually really enjoy for brow. I think the Gimme Brow has amazing hold. It's got a really really petite tiny brush and it can be nice for just a quick filling. If you're not totally without brows, you know if your mission every day that you do your brows isn't to totally recreate it but just add a little thickness. I think this is a pretty good product for that. It gives them a little tint of color. And this is a really, really similar concept. If you get a close look at this brush from the hard candy thing, um, you can see there are tons of little fibers in it. And also quite a bit of a creamy, like tinted brow mascara gel type product in there as well. I find that more product comes out on the hard candy brush than with the Benefit, and the Benefit seems drier overall. But all in all, something you're supposed to be able to just kind of breeze through, you know, uh, drag it through your brows, and you've got thickness and just more of a filled in look. And then on the other end here, you're also getting a highlighting stick. It's retractable, um, just a pearly glow. I have a little bit of that up under my brows as well, but it's probably, after doing my eyeshadow, gotten a little bit covered up now. One drawback to these kind of tinted fill-in brow gels is that if you've got specific areas that you need to cover up, like a scar or just some really bare place where you need specific coverage happening there, these little wands, while they're nice, they're not quite precise size enough to fill in those small areas. So what I did, I just grabbed an angled brow brush, picked up some of the creamy product that's on here, and used that on those specific areas where I needed some filling in. And then once I had that done, I just went over the whole brow. As far as the hold on my brows, how well it keeps them in place, I've thought Benefit's Gimme Brow was really, really strong with that. And this is close to as good, maybe not quite as good. I need to keep using it some more, but i um, really excited that something like this is out there in the drugstore. Another product I picked up, and this may not be new, I haven't given a good look to the different hard candy mascara products in a while, but it's the Thousand Lashes Fiberized Lash Weave Primer. <laughs> I thought this sounded cool. It looks like it would be a squeezy tube, right? But it's totally like plastic and solid. You look at the brush and it's kind of like a mix between a cream and a gel when you really get up close to it. And I can also see some of the little bitty fibers that will attach to your own lashes, hopefully lengthen them out, thicken them up, and then you can put your regular mascara on top. There are some lash primers I've used that really show up white, like from the first coat on your lashes. And this one doesn't show up much when I get my first coat on there. It's it's like just kind of a milky look, but not totally white. If you go on with a second coat of this, you will see more. And so today I tried doing two coats of this. I did two coats on top, two coats on bottom. It dries um, surprisingly quickly, a little bit faster than I expected. And I think it's going to take me a while to lay my hands on the mascara that works best layered on top of this, because so far I haven't been like over the moon with the effects. I mean, I do notice that this primer adds thickness, but not really 
really a ton of length. When I first used this, I used my Mally Volumizing Mascara on top. Again, thicker lashes, but not much length. Today, I used my Voluminous from L'Oreal Miss Manga on my upper lashes, and I noticed, you know, some length, but a lot of clumpiness as well. But my CoverGirl Clump Crusher Water Resistant, I used that um, on my lower lashes and I really like the way that applied. So I'm thinking maybe, um, you know, this Thousand Lashes Primer paired with a more defining, lengthening type of mascara might be the ticket. So I'll keep messing with it. Some really cool new eyeshadow finds, you guys. I'm so excited about There's this. There's something new called uh, Fierce Effects High Intensity Eyeshadow. I have it in eight nine. 96 soft and sultry. It's two shadows that come in a little box like this. Check it out. What do these remind you of? Um, L'Oreal Infallible Shadows? Totally seems like an even lower cost option to me because those L'Oreal shadows will run me like maybe around eight bucks or so on average for one. And with these, I believe it was maybe around five or six dollars and you get two. So it's different combinations of duos that are available and the ones I chose in this soft and sultry are kind of uh, a goldeny bronze and a uh, I would call it like a light sage green. Very metallic on both of these. Just by swatching, they have a texture that really reminds me of the L'Oreal Infallible Shadows, but I haven't yet tried these on my eyes yet. This is the one thing in this haul that I have not yet used, so I will report back, but I was very excited to see those. And then the last thing I have to touch on are some new palettes. Now, you may have seen already existing in Hard Candy's line some palettes called like Top 10 Eyeshadow Collection, I think, and they are packaged like this the same size, but they've got kind of a lace detail on them. And I have a couple of those, and I really was not blown away by them at all. I thought many of the shadows in the ones I got, which were a neutral and a purple one, I thought there was a lot of flakiness going on, lots of fallout. Um, I wanted them to be like the same quality as the Hard Candy Baked Shadow Duos that I love, but I, I just felt like they were lacking a lot. And so then I saw these, the Top 10 Trendsetters eyeshadow collections. I was getting a close look at them and I thought, ooh, you know, there's some different finishes happening here. I wonder if they've reformulated. I'm really excited to try. So I picked up three of these. I believe they were around six bucks each. I think there might have been five or six palettes total to choose from. And keep in mind, this is more of a haul than a total review on these products because I, while I have used each of these palettes now one time, um, there are ten shadows in each of them. So there's many more combinations of colors that I've yet to put on my eyelids. But I totally want to show you some swatches and show you the looks I've done with these so far. The one that first caught my eye it has this forest green kind of um, faux leathery feel right here and this is called Raining Men. It's Raining Men! And this strikes me as a really fall-like palette. Um, I will say there's not much variety in finish here. You've got a lot of shimmer and some that show up just downright metallic. But the colors are really quite beautiful and I'm loving what's happening here. Yes, the gold, the cranberry, um, this green, really nice emerald here. Kind of a neat like berryish purple shade over on this side. There are a few shades in here that I found to be especially flaky and that's this kind of light olive green, this champagne color here, and a little bit flaky with this um, shimmery peach on the but end. All in all I'm showing you these swatches with no primer underneath and of course as soon as I got these home after I bought them I was swatching them out on my hand and I thought mm, you know decent. They're not like Urban Decay shadows or Too Faced, but we'll see how they do on the eyes. And they really respond well with a primer underneath. I thought the eye look that I ended up with when I first used this, which incorporated some of the gold and the cranberry and some of the brown, uh, I thought it turned out really, really nicely. So I'm excited to keep using this one some more. The next one I got is entirely matte, and this is called Birthday Suit. And so you've got just a total spectrum of matte shades here. You've got different tones of highlights, but they really didn't skimp on the mid-tone shades either. You've got like warm and cool uh, kind of taupey gray type shades. A couple of really nice deep shades in the form of a matte brown and also a dark, dark navy blue. The feel of these really surprised me. Quite a bit softer than I expected. Not the level of pigmentation that I'm getting out of a Wet n Wild palette, but like I said, on top of primer, on your lids, these apply really nicely. They blend easily. From what I've noticed so 
so far a few of the lighter shades when I'll tap a brush into it I'll get quite a bit of like flaky kind of fallout from it but as a whole really pleasantly surprised with this and the look that I did with it um, incorporated I think this creamy shade this kind of um, soft caramely color some of the dark brown as well that shade is really nice and blendable and the final one is the one I'm wearing today and it's called aphrodisiac and this one is just a total like grab bag I mean it's color it's some neutral it's matte it's shimmer when I open it up I feel like I'm looking at like an old uh, paint set I might have had as a kid you know the colors are just so um, pure I guess when you look at them in here like there's your orange there's your purple blue green um, for today's look I am wearing this green all over the lid and I've got a little bit of black in the crease just kind of outer corner smudged underneath some of this bronzy goldeny shade under the eye and above as well as a little bit of this shade sheared out and when I see these in the swatches I don't feel totally blown away by the color payoff but yet I'm not disappointed either and knowing that they they show up on top of a primer on my eyes even better. I'm feeling like it's something I can work with. This green kind of earthy look I thought today turned out kind of pretty, but there's so many more like potential combinations in something like this. But really to me, it seems like with these new top 10 trendsetters collection um, palettes, it seems like Hard Candy has made some changes. Definitely added in some matte finishes, which is cool to see. So yay, exciting. But that kind of wraps up my Hard Candy haul. If you've run across other products, in their line that I may have missed that you're interested in, please let me know in the comments section. And thank you guys so much for watching. Bye!